Well, hey friends, and welcome back. Today, I want to spend the day together as we refresh and make over our front door and little entryway area. And this is a space that ever since we first moved into our house about a year ago, I've largely ignored. Literally all that's there right now is a little layered doormat situation. Not the best first impression to our home. So I'm really excited to inject some life and some character into this space and to create an environment where people feel welcomed into our home from the get-go. So let's get started now. And when beginning any project, I really like to start with a clear idea and vision for exactly what I want to create. So I'm going to insert a quick clip of our current entryway setup, and this is going to be our canvas. Okay, so here's what we're working with. Walking up to our entryway, you have this long, narrow area that really isn't being used at all. And then towards the door, you just have two layered doormats and the front door. And then just two other things of note, we have this dirty pot light that I want to switch out. And then also there's some grime that's built up along here that I want to take care of. So obviously we have a long ways to go and there are definitely some challenging elements with this. Specifically, I don't love the look of the siding along the entryway, but because of our homeowners association rules, it's not really something we can do anything about. But then also just the general dimensions of the entryway with it being very long, but also quite narrow, definitely makes it difficult. But I've been looking online and on Pinterest and I think I've come up with a few good ideas. So I'm looking at the inspiration pictures that I've put together, I'd say there are definitely some pretty strong common themes. First is that I really like the neutral color palette and I really want to lean into that. I love that contrast of black and white with some greenery, so I really want to replicate that. Then another big theme is that I think in every single one of the images that I saved, there was some kind of greenery or plant that kind of drew the eye upward. And I think that really helps to establish a sort of focal point and kind of helps the eyes move in a specific direction. And something that I love in this one specifically is that they've used a narrow bench to kind of fill out the space. And then last but not least, I feel like lighting really does play such a massive role in just upgrading the overall look of the entryway. And right now, like you saw, we just have that little pot light in place. So it's definitely something that I want to upgrade. So that's the vision of what we're trying to create. And I'm so excited to see this all come together. A few days back, I did some online ordering and found several of the pieces. And then yesterday, and I'll insert some of the footage here, I went to the store, I went to Home Goods, Target, and Home Depot, and picked up just a few decor items, plants, and other miscellaneous items that I want to use to fill up the space. I bought a wreath, some plants to fill the planters, and a few other miscellaneous items. So at this point, we have everything we need, we're ready to go, and it's time to start putting this all together. So enough sitting and talking, let's get to it. So step one in all of this was to swap out the light. The recessed light that was put in when the house was built just wasn't doing any favors for the entryway, and it did nothing really to add to the personality or character of the space. So one of the very first things that I went out and bought when we decided to refresh our entryway was a new light. I ordered this one off of Amazon and had Christopher install it last night. And immediately, it just felt like such an instant upgrade to our entryway. I feel like lighting always does that. To me at least, it's one of those subtle but high impact changes. The light fixture that we decided to go with was just a simple black lantern style, but I love how timeless and classic it is. Then next, the whole area was in need of a major cleaning. So I spent a couple of hours wiping down all of the siding and washing the cement. This was pretty hot and sweaty work, but definitely worth the effort. As I slowly peeled back what was essentially a layer of grime, I felt like we were given a whole new entryway. And I feel like in a way this really was the most rewarding type of cleaning because it was really easy to see the progress that I was making. Although I will say, in case you're thinking of doing a similar entryway makeover yourself, if I were to go back and do this again, I would probably rent a power washer. While there was definitely something very rewarding and almost therapeutic about doing this by hand, I think it would have saved me a lot of time just to pressure wash it. That's lesson learned for next time though. Then after that, I turned my attention to easily one of the projects that I was most excited for, 
customizing my planters. Before our entry, I picked up two sets of planters, one from Target and one from Amazon. The ones from Target I actually found on clearance. I think they were around $40 to begin with, but I was able to find them for just $6. And I bought them because I love the texture of them, but not so much the color. And then the ones from Amazon were the perfect size, but after looking at dozens, if not hundreds of planters, I couldn't find ones that were visually exactly what I was looking for. So in both cases, I decided to DIY them a bit. With both of them, I knew that I wanted to change up the color. While not awful, I didn't really feel like they went together all that well or that they would stand out and kind of have a visual impact in the entryway. So I decided to paint the taller planters white and go with gray for the smaller ones. My thought was that we could go with a cool kind of plaster look for the taller ones and then for the smaller ones use the existing texture on them that I already loved to create a cool kind of stone cement look. So I started spraying them down with spray paint and after one application I could definitely see that vision coming together. But then after letting that initial coat of spray paint dry for a couple of hours, I added a second coating to the smaller planters, and from there, the smaller ones were pretty much good to go. But then with the larger ones, it was time to add some texture. Since planters can be extremely expensive, especially for the bigger ones, I had decided early on in my research to try DIYing a textured plaster look rather than investing the hundreds of dollars it would take to buy stone planters new. So I purchased this dry deck spackling and knockdown knife from Home Depot and used a putty knife that we already had on hand to apply the spackling. And this ended up being very much one of those trust the process projects. I'd never done anything like this before, so at first it was a bit terrifying. The spackling goes on bright pink, and I knew that theoretically it should fade to white as it dried, but that didn't make it any less terrifying in the moment. Here I had these planters that I wanted to end up white that I'd suddenly turned bright pink. I did keep with it though, and actually ended up having a lot of fun creating a really interesting textured look on the planter. Now I will say, time did end up catching up with me here, and I ended up having to leave the second planter for the following day. So the next day I woke up and that first planter was looking absolutely incredible. I am thrilled with how this project came out. And I just finished putting the plaster on the second pot before doing the knockdown on the first. The only step that was left for that initial planter was to knock down some of the peaks that I'd created when applying the spackling. And the peaks are just those small bits that stick out from the rest of the spackling. And I just used the knockdown knife that I purchased, which is essentially a squeegee covered in a thin layer of foam, to gently remove those peaks and just to smooth out the planter's surface. And honestly, I was so happy with how this planter came out, it is exactly what I was going for, so I just repeated the process for the second planter. And I have to say, it was definitely worth it too. I love the very custom and I would say even high-end look of the planters now. If I hadn't done the DIY myself, I never would assume just looking at these that they're made out of plastic. And then it was time to pot everything up. So I just removed the plastic nodules from the pots so that they could drain properly and started placing each of the plants into the respective planter. And for the flowers in the smaller gray planters, I decided not to take them out of their black nursery pots. That way, it would just be easier to switch them out from season to season. But then for the larger planters, I intentionally went out and bought plants that would be hardy enough to stay in the pots year round. So to prepare the Chinese holly for planting, I filled the planter with dirt and then started breaking up some of the root system so that they would be able to establish a bit more of a root base. Then I just placed the plants into our newly DIY pots. The last thing that I did was just to trim a couple of the places where the plants had grown unevenly. All right, well friends, we've made it to the end. Now comes the fun part. It's time to put it all together. And this is always my favorite part of any DIY project. It's the time when all of the individual pieces you've been working on finally come together and you get to see all your hard work pay off. 
So I started by positioning the doormats and putting the planters into place, making sure that I was happy with the angles before moving on to the other details. I also used my favorite hack, command strips, to hang up this fun mid-century decor piece and our wreath. Okay, well we just finished putting the last few pieces into place and you guys, I cannot believe how good it looks. Literally just a night and day transformation. I don't want to keep you waiting any longer though for the final reveal. So as a quick reminder, here's what it looked like before and here's what it looks like now. I just love all of the different textures and neutrals that we were able to add to this area, and it really does help draw the eye in. And where before our old entryway felt very bare and I would say almost cold even, now it feels like this welcoming entry into the home. It's a space that really draws and invites you in and just immediately sets the tone for that atmosphere of coziness, of being welcome, and really just being able to feel comfortable in the space. So really, I am just thrilled with how this front door transformation came out and I can't wait to start welcoming friends and family into our home. Now though, I am pretty hot and sweaty. It's been about 90 degrees this entire time that I've been working on the project. So I'm ready for a nice cold shower. So I'm going to wrap this one up here, but as always, if you're interested in where anything is from, I'll try to link to as much as possible in the description box below. And don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more simple and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week. And until next time, friends, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.